Hey guys, my name is Preston Palmer, Student Engineering. We're going over position and force vectors in this video, and if you find it helpful, please subscribe. Position and force vectors help us apply what we've learned about vectors to solve engineering problems. A position vector is a vector that relates one point to another point in space, where the magnitude of the vector is the distance between the two points, and the direction is how to get from one point to the other. A force vector is a vector that represents a force acting along objects, usually like a rope or a cable, where the magnitude is the, how big the force is, and the direction is the direction along the rope or the cable. So say you're given two points in space, point A and point B. If you want to draw a vector between point A and point B, you can use this formula. The position vector r equals x sub b minus x sub a i hat plus y sub b minus y sub a j hat plus z sub b minus z sub a k hat. So this formula will give you a Cartesian vector relating one point to another, where you can use this to find the direction of, say, a force vector if you're given a rope with a point at both ends of the rope, you can find the unit vector to find direction of the force along that rope. All right, so here we have an example problem where we can use what we learned about position and force vectors to figure out the resultant force acting on this flagpole. So we have a flagpole here where the pole itself is going along the z-axis and the ground is in the xy plane. And then we have two ropes coming off of it, pulling with different forces. And so what we need to do first is to find position vectors that represent these ropes. And from there we will find the force vector from the direction that those position vectors are going. And so to start off, we need to represent each of these points as points on our coordinate, ac coordinate system. So, we can see that point A is not going at all in the x and y directions, but it is 6 meters up in the z direction. So we will say that point A is 0x, 0y, and 6z. Point B is not going at all in the z direction, but it is going 2 meters in the well, in the z or in the x direction and negative 3 in the y direction because it's on this side of the x axis. So it's negative 3 y. So 2 negative 3 0. And point C is very similar except that it is going 3 in the x direction, 2 in the y direction, and again 0 in the z direction. So 3, 2, 0. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use the equation that we have where we minus point B from point A to get the position vector that represents these ropes. And so we'll do point B minus point A and point C minus point A to find these two position vectors. So position vector R sub B equals 2 minus 0 in the i direction plus negative 3 minus 0 in the j direction plus 0 minus 6 in the k direction. And then r sub c, we'll call it, is going to be 3 minus 0 in the i hat direction, plus
plus 2 minus 0 in the j direction plus again 0 minus 6 in the k direction. And so we end up getting that r sub b equals 2i minus 3j minus 6k. And then r sub c is 3i plus 2j minus 6k. And so these are our position vectors representing these ropes. It's going from point A to point B and from point A to point C. So our vector is going between that with the magnitude being the length of those ropes and the direction being from how to get to point, from point A to point B and from A to point C. And that's what our position vectors are telling us. And so what we need to do now is find the magnitude of each of those to find the length of those ropes. And remember, we do that by doing the square root of the sum of the squares, or the square root of the square of each of these components. And so we'll do the magnitude of r sub b equals the square root of 2 squared plus negative 3 squared plus negative 6 squared. And as you can see, when we square the negative, the negative will go away. So we'll get a positive answer. And r sub c is square root of, of 3 squared plus 2 squared plus negative 6 squared. And we can see that they have the same numbers in them, so we're going to end up getting the same answer. If you plug that into your calculator, you'll get that this is 7 meters. So each of these ropes are 7 meters long. So now we have a vector that is our, represents our ropes, and we have the magnitude of each of those ropes. Now what we need to do is find the unit vector of those position vectors so that we can have the direction in which these forces are acting because right now all we have is the magnitude or how hard they are pulling. And this will give us the direction they're pulling. So remember that we do that by dividing the vector by its magnitude. That will give us the unit vector. And so, our unit, we'll call this unit vector B equals our vector, our position vector B divided by its magnitude, which is two divided by seven I minus 3 divided by 7 j minus 6 divided by 7 k. And our unit vector for vector, or for our rope c, is 3 divided by 7 i plus 2 divided by 7 j minus 6 divided by 7 k. And remember that's because our unit, our position vector was 3i plus 2j minus 6k for our vector c. And its magnitude was 7. So now what we have is the direction given by these unit vectors, and we have the magnitude given by these forces. And so that's what we need to find the Cartesian vector representing those forces. That will give us both a magnitude and a direction. And so what we're going to do is we're going to multiply the magnitude by the direction, and that will give us a complete vector.
vector that represents those forces that we can then add up and get our resultant vector. So our resultant force, not the resultant force, the force B is equal to the unit vector sub B times by the magnitude of the force sub B, which is 2 sevenths times by 700. The sevens will cancel and you get 100 times by 2, which is 200i minus 300j minus 600k. And our other one, our force vector for C is going to be the unit vector of C times by the force of C, which is 3 sevenths times by 560, which ends up being 240i plus 160j minus 480k. And so now we have two complete Cartesian vectors that represent these two forces acting along those ropes. And so we'll add them together, each of the components, to get the resultant force vector. So we'll call that S of R equals 440i minus 140j because it's 160 minus 300 so you get 140 and then negative 600 minus 480 is negative 1080 in the k direction so this resultant force vector is pulling 440 newtons in this direction and 140 newtons in that direction because it's going in the negative y direction and down in with 100 or 1080 newtons of force going in the negative z direction. So now we have the resultant force vector and we want to find the magnitude of it. So we'll do the square root of sum of the squares and going to do the magnitude of the resultant vector equals the square root of 440 squared plus negative 140 squared plus negative 1080 squared. And it ends up coming out to be that the magnitude in which it, the resultant force is pulling is 1,175 newtons, which is the same thing as 1.175 kilonewtons. So now we know how hard the flagpole is being pulled, but we don't really know the direction. We have the vector, but we either need to find the unit vector of that, or we can find the angles at which it is pulling. So in some of my other videos, we've explained how these angles, alpha, beta, and gamma, come off the x, y, and z axis to represent the direction that a vector, say vector v, is going. And we can use these formulas to find those angles, given that we have how far it is going in the x, y, and z directions and the magnitude of the vector itself. And we have already solved for all that, so we can use that to find these angles in which the vector is going. So alpha equals the arc cosine of f sub x, which is 440, divided by 1175 
beta is the arc cosine of f sub y, which is negative 140, divided by the magnitude 1175, and gamma is the arc cosine of negative negative 1080 divided by 1175 and that comes out to be 68 degrees off of the x-axis 96.8 degrees off the y-axis and 157 degrees off of the z-axis so if we place this little axe coordinate system and its origin up here at point A, we would see that our force vector is coming off 68 degrees from the z axis or the x axis, 96.8 off of the y axis, and 157 degrees off of the z axis. And that makes sense because it's pulling down in this direction, so it's going to be greater than 90 degrees, and which it is. And so there we have all the angles coming off of these respective axes to show which direction our force vector is coming off and which direction it is pulling. So that's it guys. If you like this video and found it helpful, please hit that like button. And if you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comments below. And don't forget to subscribe.